Do you know the shortest chapter in the Bible? Hmm, and or the shortest verse in the Bible. I want you to think of that and I'll tell you at the end of this episode. Hi, this is Tito, your light bearer. I am here to help you eliminate the path to transformation and empowerment. Welcome to a journey of self-discovery, growth, and spiritual awakening. Join me as we navigate the complexities of life and embrace the light within us that God has called us to. Are you ready to be everything God has called you to be? Let's embark on this adventure together. This is more than a podcast. This is a beacon of hope guiding you towards a life of purpose and fulfillment. So sit back, relax, and let's ignite the flames of possibility. Welcome to my podcast. Before I go on, I need to apologize profusely for missing last week's episode life can just take a turn sometimes and you don't know when you've you've kind of gotten away with it gotten out of sync so i apologize for that but i am here to continue to share um weekly so please remember to subscribe okay i know someone is thinking about what the don't google it don't google it you have to listen until the end and i'll tell you what the shortest chapter in the bible is and also what the shortest verse is so just keep listening but before we get into that i just of course want to know how are you how are you feeling did you listen to my last podcast i hope you did we talked a lot about jealousy and this week we're going to delve deeper into that by actually talking about contentment which i believe is also another key to dealing with the negative emotion of jealousy and instead of us comparing ourselves negatively which is where jealousy often comes from i believe that being content in your unique identity and purpose is going to be the key for you to live in a life where you are truly content and living the life that god has created you for over the past few weeks i have been coaching a few people i offered free coaching sessions to some very Um, lucky women and it's been great I've been so blessed and inspired by all the amazing women I met so thank you so much for meeting with me but I noticed a a, a recurring theme what I noticed with quite a few of the women I was speaking to was this feeling of discontent this feeling of confusion about you know if what they were called to do their purpose their identity who God has said to them that they are I saw women who are so gifted and talented and blessed and unique. I saw them cave under insecurities and self-doubt and worry and comparison and just self-condemnation. And it was quite heartbreaking to see and very frustrating. And so I've been thinking about that a lot. Like, what would it take for us to embrace our unique identity our unique light you know when the bible says you are the light of the world let your light so shine that men would see your good works and glorify your father in heaven what does that look like and why are many of us not seeing ourselves in that way ah the other day i sat out with this incredible artist like she is so gifted and you know she was talking about art and she said to me and i and i was like oh this is amazing this is such a gift and she said to me, yeah, but I don't know if this is how God wants me to use it. And I thought, that's a genuine question. But then she said, because she, it doesn't seem important enough. And I thought, important in whose terms? And I said, maybe just the fact that you have the gift and you're using it can also be enough. This is just starting with that. But she didn't seem content with that answer. And then I started thinking about the amazing teacher I spoke to the other day and she was talking about um, that she doesn't think she's impacting enough. Like when she looks on social media, there are people that are winning awards and, you know, getting global acclaim for being great at what they do. And she wasn't sure if what she was doing was enough. And then I asked her, so how many kids have you taught since you started teaching many years ago? And she said, at least 240 40 kids. I said, so, the, so those are 240 kids that you've directly impacted their lives. Those are kids that you've been able to help with their confidence, to be able to learn the basics of reading and writing, which is the foundation for them becoming everything God has called them to be. 
if people like you did not exist, would those kids be able to get what they needed for them to be everything they're meant to be? And in the conversation, there were things that she wanted in life that she just felt like she couldn't get. And I don't want to go into the whole coaching thing, but what we realized was that everything she needed was within her. Not only was it within her, it was within reach. And all she had to do was look within for those solutions. And I saw a light bulb and I thought, this is actually why we need to be content. Because when we are not content, we're looking outside of us, looking to the world to tell us what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, when we should be doing it, why we should be doing it. As opposed to be looking within us, what God has placed within us. That unique identity, those unique gifts, those unique talents that he has placed within us. We're not looking at that. So I've been thinking about contentment a lot. And, you know, it's been happening even with my kids. Like, Emmanuel crying that he didn't want to go to school because he didn't have his football kit on. And being worried that people were going to laugh at him. Yes, my five-year-old was worried that people were going to laugh at him because he didn't have a jersey on. And I thought, no, you need to be content that whether you have it or not, whether people laugh at you or not, you need to love yourself enough to show up with with what you do have. Or Seven craving to have long blonde hair like her best friend and me saying to her, but you have beautiful brown, black, curly hair that your best friend doesn't have who also wants yours because I put those beads on her hair. They look lovely, but she was still wanting something else. You see that thing about else other what other people have what others people other people see what other people say and the more we're and the world is filled with that especially with social media it's so filled with other people other people we're, we're literally craving other people's lives to the point where we miss what god is saying to us and i've been thinking about that a lot and i was talking to my husband about it and we just realized that we all have the same struggle even for me you know, it's it's a struggle I, I face trying to shut out what the world is saying and just focus on what God is saying to me, right? And when I, I found that I'm, I'm at my best when I'm walking the path that God has created for me, not the path that the world is telling me I should want. Um, so I've just been thinking about contentment a lot. And I believe that many of us are in that place where we're not content either your your calling right now is to be a mom or to be a teacher or to be an artist or to be a singer or whatever it is there's just that feeling of is this enough is this enough is this enough um and i thought as a follow-up to the initial post uh, to the initial episode i made about jealousy it will be good to do a deeper dive into the topic of contentment i hope that this would help someone and once again remember that if you want to go into this as well you can always have a conversation with me, leave your comments, send me a a message with your questions and I'll be happy to answer it. Okay, so some of the ways I believe we need to deal with this conversation about contentment is by looking at what the Bible says, right? Um, Looking at what the Bible says, looking at what God says to you about yourself and how to live a life that you find fulfilling to the point where you're not comparing yourself and you're able to be content with wherever you are in life regardless of whether somebody has more money than you or not because hey let's face it somebody will always have more somebody will always be more beautiful so for every accolade you get somebody might get 10 (laughs) you know or that mansion you leave there's somebody that has a bigger mansion there's always more so you would if we always looked at the more and not the what we have you'd constantly feel like you're not living to your purpose or living um, a life of, you'll not feel content with your life. So I was thinking about that the other day and I was thinking, okay, how do we deal with this practically? Um, And the first thing, I know I've already said it, but I just want to emphasize again that contentment is from within. It's what God has placed within you. It's identifying your own unique talent, your own unique purpose, your own unique call and it's the quiet acceptance of oneself. It's the gratitude for the blessings we already possess and the unwavering trust in our own unique journey that God has created for us. So one of the key ways for me, for us to address the issue of contentment and to find it is by being grateful, having a lifestyle of gratitude. Um, I think it's important to 
embrace the transformative power of gratitude that the more you see how blessed you are the more you begin to appreciate what you have so acknowledging god's goodness and provision even amidst challenges when things are not perfect you know yes you're living in a house that is not your dream home but at least you have a roof over your head you know um you're in a job that you're not keen on but that job is sustaining you until you until you get to the next one and it's teaching you something you're growing um you're in your mommy stage right now but trust me that is a beautiful stage i I remember talking to a mom actually and she was telling me that when when she had when she made the decision to stay at home with her kids she was so sad and she thought oh god um all my friends are killing in their careers and all of that which is also brilliant for them everyone has different purposes um and she was she kept comparing herself so she was always unhappy she was always discontent um and then eventually she had to start work because things happened and it, it, it became a desperate situation where she had to go back to work right and she said to me Tito I don't know I don't think I actually really want this life I'd rather be at home with my babies right now in their formative years and actually working my ass off to pay for daycare anyway like what am I doing and so she actually decided she was gonna go back and take on full-time mommyhood and embrace it embrace it and you know just be grateful for the opportunity she has to spend with her kids you know she has when you know she can see them growing up enjoy those moments she's very present right and i think once again gratitude helps you with the right perspective you know and it helps you to see that god's abundant grace is enough um you know colossians 3 15 to 17 talks about that a lot paul talks about just um cultivating habits of thankful thankfulness in all circumstances recognizing god's goodness and provision even amidst um challenges so yeah being grateful just take a minute right now you could even pause this actually don't skip listening but just write five things you can be grateful for right now in your life that maybe you've taken for granted right so that's the first thing now number two i i believe that it's about being focused Staying focused on God's purpose for your life empowers you to navigate challenges with contentment and clarity. What do I mean? Understanding that your identity and purpose is in Christ enables you to find fulfillment in his plan for you. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Um, I have a future and a hope for you. And so instead of you constantly looking around saying, What's that person doing? What's this other person doing? What's that person doing? Oh, you know, my life is behind, whatever. You go back to God and say, What am I supposed to be doing? I've talked a bit about like quitting my job and maybe I'll do an episode on that. Um so for me to know if you guys are listening, leave a comment if you want me to do if the next episode you want is about how how I chose to leave a very lucrative job to come back to coaching. I am back to coaching in case you missed it. I am so please feel free to book a session. Um, yeah, so thinking about my journey, I made a decision to leave a job that paid me really well because when I was pressing it with God, I found that what God was calling me to was coaching. And I remember speaking to Shopee of Visibility, and she was saying that, um, Tito, you a lot of women are in prison because of you. And when she said that, I remember the verse, the anchor scripture that's always been for me, which is in Isaiah 61. I'm, I'm trying to open it as well because I wrote it down, but I've missed it. Um, and it's from Isaiah 61. It says that the, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And for me, I've had that as my anchor scripture for years. And I I was, you know, life is in season, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. Anyway, when it was time for me to go back to full-time coaching, I knew. And it was because I was focused on what God was saying to me. Even when everybody had opinions and thoughts, I just had to embrace what God was saying to me. So it's the same. If you're focused on your call, your strengths, your weaknesses, whatever that is, being a homemaker, being a teacher, being an artist, you know, using your voice, working that corporate ladder, being a banker, being an accountant, you know, 
whatever it is that God has called you to, if you just focused on that, you'll find that you're way more content with your life than if you were trying to listen to what the world is saying. I always tell my son Joshua, <laughs> Joshua, when he's focused on his homework, it's incredible what he does. But the moment he gets distracted by, oh, somebody's doing that, or somebody doing the other that, you just see that he loses. <laughs> the, the quality of work just slips, right? And I think it's the same thing. Some of us, the quality of our of our work, the quality of our of what we get sleeps where we're trying to pay attention to everything else and so focused on what God has said to do. So I believe that being focused is so important to finding contentment. And that automatically leads me to the third leads me to the third point. I think thirdly, avoid comparison. I, we've already touched on comparison when I was talking about jealousy in the previous episode. Please listen to that because I really went into that. Um, but comparison is such a distraction. Um, comparing ourselves to others, it distracts us from our own unique purpose, our own unique journey, what God is saying to you. And then you find that you're, you're unhappy because you're constantly thinking, oh, that person is doing that thing, that person is doing that thing, that person is doing that thing. Forgetting that what you've been gifted to do is all that matters and you're doing it well. Um, there was a lady I was talking to and she was saying now, oh, I'm so blessed and I don't know why God is blessing me and all of that. And, you know, she was just feeling restless, like I'm supposed to be doing more. I'm supposed to be doing more. I'm supposed to be doing more based on, once again, what she assumed was important based on what the world said, forgetting that we all have our own unique calls. And I was saying to her, um, and I was like, oh, what do you like to do? What do you think? What are some of the things that you know that you've been called to? She said, helping other people, giving. And I know that it seems like giving is such an obvious one, but there are some people that really, that's their gift. Being generous, I think it's in the Bible, being generous is their gift. They have that gift. Those are people we call kingdom financiers. And I was saying to her that, you're already doing what you're meant to do. It's just then now being deliberate to say, this is what God has said I'm supposed to do. Instead of thinking this is how God is saying other people should do it. This is what God has said I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do it well. I'm not going to compare myself to anybody. And I was teasing her and I said, hey, look, some of you guys have just been blessed with so materially because God believes that you will fund the work of the kingdom, right? And for example, some people might know, in case you don't, get on it. My husband is going on a tentative tour around the UK. He's been doing music for years, but God has now called him to worship music. A tentative tour around the UK means that he's going to need partners. He's going to need the financiers to finance this vision, right? While he's there using his voice and embracing his own calling, right? But imagine if the people that are meant to be kingdom financiers or the people that are meant to help with the dream are all trying to also sink. <laughs> what happens? As opposed to, okay, we, I always use this analogy of Voltron. We all bring our different talents and our different gifts to build something incredible. And so when you stop comparing yourself and you start looking at just walking your own unique path, your own unique purpose, you find that you're very content with where you are. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. And then um, I'm thinking Galatians 6, 4 to 5, for example, will tell you. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have his own, each will have to bear his own load. Like we all literally have individual capacity that God has given us, and we all need to bear that and we know all need to embrace it. So instead of comparing yourself, begin to just find your own call. And if that's the other thing, if some people actually and it's always within you, God has put certain desires, certain frustrations, certain joys within you that are um, a, a, a landmark to what he's called you to do, right? So it's you embracing that instead of comparing to other people. And you know when I was talking about all of us being like Voltron, Voltron will be God's kingdom here on earth. I think that the most important thing is knowing what truly matters. Knowing what truly matters, what God has what God's agenda in this world is about. Understanding that we're ultimately living um, according to God's design for us, for His glory. When you embrace God's agenda as your driving force, not what the world says, not accolades, not, you know, Instagram likes or following, not even necessarily um, approval or validation, but God's 
agenda. When you do that and you let that be your driving force and you're constantly seeking his guidance, his wisdom in every aspect of your life, when you understand that what truly really matters is what God has called you to, what truly really matters is the fact that when you leave this world, all you have left behind is the things that God called you to that you did well. When you start looking at life that way, it helps you to find contentment in embracing every unique thing God has called you to. And understanding that God is the author and finisher, right? He's the alpha and the omega. It's about living the life he's called you to. So instead of looking out in the world and comparing and thinking, what's that person doing? What's this person doing? Will they like it? Will they like that? Oh, do they approve or not? Instead of doing that, and you start saying, God, what are you saying? God, what is this for? Okay, you gave, I'm, I'm blessed with a million dollars. Amen. Um, what am I supposed to do, use it for? I was talking to a lady yesterday, one of my very, very dear friends. And she was saying to me that growing up, she, she she didn't have a lot. And so she was a bit frugal. And so she's always been very responsible financially. And that when she had a lot more than she needed, i.e. not just needed, or even she wanted, she realized that it was an opportunity for her to give. So she gives so generously. In fact, she was saying to me, that, Ozito, your birthday is coming up. My birthday is April 12th. It's not even that close. But she was saying, oh, I would like to treat you for your birthday. Because she also knows I'm in this space where, you know, God has called me to go back to coaching, to give up my very lucrative job, to start helping more people. And she was like, I just really want to treat you. And you can see that for her, it's like, that's how she sees the gift God has given her. And, you know, she owns houses and she rents her houses out for cheap, like literally cost price. Because once again, it's not just about her taking more, more, more. You know, the story of the man who had so much and then he said, oh, I have so much. In fact, I'm going to build a barn and then store it. Then I'm going to say to myself, oh, you've done well or whatever. And, and God said to him, oh, you fool, um, today will be your last day. There's that thing of when you understand what matters, when you understand that God is calling us for his kingdom to bless others so that we can all do what we're meant to do so that more people come into the body of christ it creates an urgency that makes you feel like i'm doing the work that matters to me to god this is the work that god has told me to do and and assume that everybody is doing the work that god has told them to do it helps you to then find contentment in that it helps you to focus because you're like okay i'm doing what matters so knowing what matters knowing it about the kingdom of god that the kingdom of god here on earth to bring it here on earth to say oh to show others that look this is god in whatever way possible when you start doing that there's a freedom that comes with that so as you understand your purpose in God's plan, you really find true contentment and fulfillment in Him. To so understand that everything you need is in God. Not in the world, but in God. So you start cultivating that intimacy. Spend time in His Word. Ask for direction every day. What do I want to what do you want me to do today? How do I partner with you today, Lord? When you start seeing that you're led by God, not by man, by people, by the world, you'll find that you're very content. I'm always, my husband said this to me, he said, you know that when you get restless is when you're not paying attention to what God is saying and you're looking around. And I'll find that maybe at that point, maybe I've spent hours on Instagram just subconsciously taking in where I'm losing, where I'm behind, where others are better than me. And he said, you know, I've noticed that, babe, when you are aligned with God, when you're walking in a way that you know that this is what God is saying, you're so at peace. And I thought, wow. He's so right. So even last couple of weeks when I was doing free coaching session, I was so at peace. I knew that I was doing what God had called me to. And you know, I got some amazing reviews. And not everybody even gave reviews, but it didn't matter to me because I was aligned. And now, even that, the fears I had about going into full-time coaching, they don't matter anymore. Because I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I'm not worried about would people pay me enough? Would I get enough? The standard of life I'm living. I truly believe that everything I need is in what God has called me to do. And so long as I embrace it, it will bring the people I need. It will bring the connections, the relationships, the answers, the strategies I need. So knowing what matters, knowing that it's about God and what he wants you to do is so key to finding your contentment. 
and you know Ephesians 2 10 says we are his workmanship we are created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them I'm going to repeat that we are God's workmanship we are created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them that's why we're here that's what matters is about God and his kingdom and I hope that in listening to this somebody is finding freedom in these words I pray the Holy Spirit is doing a work within all of us to say hey focus hey stop comparing hey know what matters hey be thankful I truly believe that embracing these pr- um, biblical principles these verses these thoughts allows us all to experience peace and contentment that surpasses all understanding knowing that we're deeply loved and valued by our heavenly father you know in the tapestry of life contentment is the thread that binds us all to joy binds us to joy when you find that you're losing your joy when you find that you're feeling restless when you find that you're feeling discontent it's because you're you're you've not embraced all that there is in God so I hope that as we navigate you know life and its challenges and it's <laughs> everything it comes with I hope that you'll find for them um, solace in the fact that you have everything you need in God and that's where your contentment comes in I hope that this has blessed someone and now let's go back to what I started with. I asked you guys what you thought the shortest chapter in the Bible is, if you knew it, because some people might know it. And actually, the shortest is in Psalm 117. It's got only two verses. And it says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That's it. And just again, for great is God's love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. I hope you remember that today. And the shortest verse ever written in the Bible was from the book of John. And it's John 11.35 and it simply states, Jesus wept. That's it. Jesus wept. I mean, I'm going to allow you to ponder on on that. Maybe go back to your Bible and read the whole of John 11. Just to see God's love for his people. You know, I really pray that this episode blessed you. Thank you for listening. I pray for you. I pray that you find contentment in God. I pray that you will know what really matters. I pray that the things that you've been blessed with, you will not dismiss them, but you embrace them. I pray that your joy, you have joy that passes all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to subscribe. Um, You can also be a paid subscriber. I have something good for those that pay to subscribe. I can't wait to share. Um, Not for everybody, but you might be a lucky winner of what I am going to be giving as a result of that. So please remember to subscribe. And also, I always look forward to your comments. Um, I always want to know that people are listening. So please leave your comments. Share with me. Share with others that might need this word. Thank you so much for listening. May the love of God cover you. May you understand that you're in peace with him. And may you find joy in everything that God has brought your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. This is Tito.